The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husky! The wonder dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The long, bitter winter of the North Country was a dreary period for the prospectors during the gold rush. For those who lived in the wilderness, there were only the routine jobs with no place to go to pass the long evenings. It was, therefore, a rare treat to have a visitor, and especially a visitor like Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police, who brought tales of adventure to isolated souls like old Mike Daly, who loved a story more than anyone in the world. Mike sighed contentedly as he put a match to his pipe and relaxed in his chair across from the Mountie, who sat with his big husky lead dog, King, beside him. Ah, uh, sure you don't know what a pleasure it is to have you here, Sergeant. I ain't seen a soul outside of old Jim Horton for a dog's age. And Jim and I were talked out years ago. <laughs> All we do now is grunt at each other. It's quite a lonely life you lead, Mike. I should have a dog like King. Sometimes I think dogs are as good company as humans. Sometimes they're much better. It's a wonder someone doesn't try to steal them from you. Well, that's been tried, Mike, hundreds of times. But when a dog and a man are as close as we are, it's pretty hard to separate them. There are uh, lots of dog thieves in this country, ain't there now? Yes, there are. Sergeant, have you uh, ever had any experience with any? No, uh, you don't have to lead me on like that, Mike. I know your weakness for hearing a good story. Well, now, if you'd rather be telling me one that ain't about dog thieves, it's all right with me. Well, as a matter of fact, I can tell you a very good one about dog thieves. That happened since I last saw you. <sighs> now, this is what I've been waiting for. Well, three or four dogs have been stolen in the vicinity of Selkirk. I was sent to investigate. I interviewed a man by the name of Matt Pearson. Matt was a dog breeder, and he'd suffered the biggest loss. Yes, sir, Sergeant Preston. Bess was the best dog I owned. She's had three litters of pups that turned out to be champions. I remember Bess. Didn't she have a broken tail? Yeah, she's the one. Got a door slammed on it. Well, they were foolish to steal her. She's too easy to identify. She's due to have another litter of pups any minute. Oh. They'll hide out until the pups can be weaned. Then they'll probably shoot poor Bess or something. There's no way anyone can identify them or prove they were mine. I see. But they won't be able to go very far with Bess and a litter of newborn pups. Well, they'll probably put her on a sled and got far enough away before they were born. Anyway, even if they didn't get far, we don't know which way they went. You can't search every shack and woodshed in a radius of ten miles. Well, that's true, Matt. But the thieves will probably stay near a town somewhere for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Not this town. I know everyone around here. And the thieves must know it. No, they wouldn't be around here, huh? But they might get as far as Selwyn. Well, it's sure a tough assignment for you, Sergeant. I really don't hope to get her back. No harm in trying, Matt. Dog thieves are my pet hate, you know. Well, there's nothing much lower. And it ain't that Bess was just valuable. I liked her better than any dog I ever had. She's smart as a megam. It's like uh, losing a good friend. Bess was the best dog with a litter of pups that I ever saw. I swear she could count. One of her pups was missing out of a litter of six. She looked till she found him. Oh. And I've heard people say dogs can't count more than four. Well, that's the average dog, Matt. Some are brighter than others. <laughs> well, I'll keep my eyes open. If we're lucky, maybe you'll get Bess back. I started out for Selwyn the following morning, Mike. There was a family living there by the name of Thomas. The two children, Mary and Bob, were very fond of King. I never went to Selwyn without stopping to see them. Well, it seems that while I was on the way to Selwyn, Mary and Bob were having quite an adventure. They'd gone off on a long hike through the hills not far from town. As they climbed to the top of one of them, young Mary suddenly saw a cabin half hidden at the base. Oh, Bobby, look! There's a cabin down there. Wonder who lives there. It's a long way from town. Let's go down and see. 
Oh, you're always wanting to go snooping around. Let's go back home. Well, look. There are two men in a dog sled. Oh, let's go down and see the dog. A trip. They've been hunting, probably. Oh, come on. Let's go down and see. Oh, all right. Gee, Mary, maybe we shouldn't have come down here. Those men don't look too friendly. Look at that nice big dog. Well, they've been riding it on the sled. I wonder why. That man is taking something out of that basket. Why, it's a puppy. Hey, where'd you kids come from? We were just climbing that hill back there and saw your cabin. Well, you better get going. We just came down to see the dogs. Are there any more puppies in that basket? You heard what I said, didn't you? Get going. Just a minute, Jake. Take it easy. Huh? Hey, where do you kids live? Well, we live in Selwyn. Uh, could I see the rest of those puppies? What happened to the mother dog's tail? It's crooked. What are we going to do, Rance? You kids own a dog. Oh, no, but we'd certainly like to. We can't afford one. Uh, please, could could I hold that puppy? Oh, just for a minute. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. Look, Bobby. Gosh, he sure is. Say, uh, how'd you like to have him? Have him? You, you don't mean you give him to us. Rance, what are you talking about? Keep still, Jake. I mean it. You can have it. First, you have to promise me something. Gee, we'd promise anything if we could have him. Well, if you promise to keep him hidden somewhere and not tell anyone about him for at least a month, he's yours. You mean not even tell our mother? Not even your mother. But where'd we keep him? They'd find out. We could put him in that old shed, Bobby. The one behind the new one Daddy built. Yeah, we could hide him there. Well, that'd be a fine place for him. Now, uh... You kids know what it means to make a promise, don't you? Oh, yes. If you break a promise, it's as bad as a lie. Yeah, it's even worse than that. Something awful will happen if you break this promise. We won't. We won't tell anybody, mister. All right. Now, I don't want you to tell anybody you even saw us here. Don't tell your family or anybody. Cross my heart and hope to die. I won't tell. Me too. Cross my heart and hope to die. All right. The pup is yours. Now, get going. Hang on the best, Jake. I'll get her. Oh, I just don't know how to thank you. Oh, we've always wanted a puppy. Yeah, thanks, mister. <laughs> hey, goodbye. I'll take very good care of him. We sure will. Gee, Bobby. Hey, just what's the idea, Rance? That pup will be worth money. We had to do something, didn't we? Those kids would have gone home and told their parents they saw us here. What of it? We didn't take best from their town. So, Kirk, ain't so far away. We can't take a chance. And this way, we're safe. I don't see how you figure Their parents will see that pup. (laughs) That puppy is too young to live more than two days without its mother. They won't know how to feed it. When it dies, they'll just bury it and won't tell anyone about it. It's the only way we could shut them up. I think we ought to get out of here. We can't go any further with these pups if we want to keep them alive. Then maybe we can find another hideout in a day or two. (laughs) Come on now. Help me put them back in the cabin. arrived in Selwyn early that afternoon, took a room at the hotel. Of course, I could pick up no information whatever about the stolen dog. It was almost spring, so the days were getting longer, and it was still light when I took King and walked to the Thomas's cabin. They were just finishing their supper when I arrived. We're certainly glad to see you, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, kids. Why, uh, where's your dad? Isn't he here? He had to take a trip to Moosehead. Oh. Hello, kids. He'll be back tomorrow. Oh, dear boy. Sit down, Sergeant. Thank you. Are you after a criminal or something, Sergeant Preston? Oh, yes, I am, Bob. Now, you finish your supper, and I'll tell you about it. I'm almost through. Don't you want to join us, Sergeant? I've, uh, eaten, thanks. You said you'd tell us about the bad men. I'm after some dog thieves, Mary. Dog thieves? A very valuable dog was stolen from a man in Selkirk. I'm here because this is the nearest town. And they couldn't have gone far because the mother dog has a litter of puppies. Did did you say puppies? Yes. Puppies? What's wrong with you children? Uh, nothing, Mother. I hope you find these men, Sergeant. There's nothing meaner than a dog thief. Sergeant? Yes, Bob? How important is a promise? A promise? Why, uh, I'd say it was very important. If you said, cross my heart and hope to die, it's important to keep a promise, isn't it? 
Oh, yes, I'd say it was, Mary. <laughs> Why are you children asking the sergeant such a question? I've always taught you to be honest, haven't I? Oh, yes. Yes, you have. <clears throat> Come on, Mary, it's almost art. Let's, uh, let's walk and play for a while. All right. But children... Don't you want to stay here with Sergeant Preston and King? We'll be back in a few minutes, Mom. You're not going out without putting on your mucklocks. We'll be right back, Mother. We won't stay out long. Am I imagining things, or are they acting peculiar? You're certainly not imagining it, Mrs. Thomas. Why is Bobby taking food out there? Taking food? Where? Part of his dinner is hidden in his shirt. He didn't know I was watching him when he hid it. He must be taking food to something. <coughs> Sergeant, I think perhaps you'd better find out what they're doing. Yes, I think so, too. Come on, King. <laughs> I'll put a park on and be with you in a minute. The children's tracks led to the old woodshed built quite far back of the cabin. King and I walked toward it quietly. As we approached, I could hear a puppy whimpering, and I stopped for a minute outside the door. Yes, hungry, but he won't eat. He can't shoot his bread. He hasn't any teeth. Oh, Bobby, we just got it some milk for him. He'll die. And it's awful expensive. And Mom keeps it way up on the top shelf. Maybe I can help you. Sergeant Preston. Oh, don't let King hurt him. Well, what a nice pup. Someone give him to you? Uh-huh. He's very young, Bob. Where's his mother? She's... Bobby, remember our promise. We can't tell you, Sergeant. You said so yourself. Oh, I see. What is it, Sergeant? Why, oh. children, what are you doing out here in this old shed? We uh, seem to have a puppy about three days old, and his origin is a sworn secret. A puppy? Sergeant, you don't think those dog thieves you're looking for... This, could... uh, this is a very fine pup, Mrs. Thomas. Hmm. Children, you must tell Sergeant Preston at once. Where did you get this puppy? We can't tell. We are... It'd be worse than a lie. Well, oh, this is a little complicated... Hmm. But, uh, but sometimes you don't keep promises. I mean, there are special cases. I, uh, I don't know how to explain it. You both said a promise should be kept. Oh, uh, you're right, Bobby. You don't have to tell. You keep your promise. But, Sergeant, Look what's they... coming in the door. It's old Bess herself. Oh, the puppy's mother. Bobby, love. Gee. Now, children, you must tell Sergeant Preston where these men are. In this case... Uh, it... Never mind, Mrs. Thomas. You can go into the ethics of it later. It'll be a lot easier for King and me to backtrack Bess's trail and to follow their directions. Keep Bess here. I'll bring the rest of her puppies back to her. One, King. <laughs> so you see, Mike, Bess, by being a good mother, solved a lot of problems. And uh, did you catch the dog thief, Sergeant? Yes. King and I got them that evening. Matt Pearson got Bess back with all of her pups and sent the Thomas children their pup a reward just as soon as it could be taken from its mother. And uh, was Mrs. Thomas able to explain to them the promise wasn't binding if it's made to thieves? Well, I imagine she did, Mike. At times like that, I'm rather glad I'm a bachelor. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. This is Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan.